God wants to guide his people. Are you willing to give him the time? Are you willing to surrender your dream? Are you willing to submit to him and say, God, this is my dream. This is my dream. Let me tell you something. I never dreamt of having this kind of church in India. But am I thankful to God? I sure am. It was a different dream I had. I wanted to go and work in another country. I wanted to, again, I could, I could justify myself because I was not trying to go to another country to start a business. I wanted to go and work in a church, in the ministry. So I thought, I'm not going out of the will of God. But if I did go, I would have been in ministry out of the will of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I would be in ministry out of the will of God. But thank God he prohibited me. Thank God he stopped me from going. Because God knows the end from the beginning. He saw today when I could not see anything. He saw what is happening now at that time. When I thought my world had come to an end. Because my dream was not being fulfilled. And God said, you're not going. Are you with me? So I'm saying we have to learn to trust him. So this is a season. When I'm fasting, what am I doing? I am making my body to submit my mind. See, the flesh and the spirit are at enmity. They don't flow, right? They're always at enmity. Enmity. They do, the flesh does not like the things of the spirit. So by fasting, what am I doing? I'm submitting the flesh unto God and saying, Lord, I have a dream. I want to be a billionaire, but not my way, your way. If I can only get that business started, I know I will be a success. You don't know. You're a fool. God knows the best. It may not be that way. It may be another way that God has for you to become a billionaire. Somebody talk to me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You don't have to become or you will not become poor if you come into ministry and you're in God. Come on. You, you don't have to be poor. But the normal impression is, oh my God, if I come into ministry, and I'm telling you, see, this, is, this is so sad. There were guys in our church who were working on staff, who were telling people who were aspiring to come into ministry, don't come, your life will be ruined. These guys were working with me, talking to people, young people who are desiring to come. I hope God will convict you if you're one of those today. Discouraging people to come into ministry. Because they thought, hey, what salary will you get? See, the whole mindset is corrupted. You don't work for God for salary. You, go, you work for God for reward. God will reward you. Not necessarily through the church you work in. God is not limited to supply your needs only through one man or one source. He is the source of all supply. Amen. So if I truly trust God and I truly serve him, he will surely provide for me I I'm not saying you will not go to the wilderness I'm not saying you will not go through some difficult times but in that time your faith will be tested and if you can come out through that victorious trusting in God God has proven you now there is nothing that he will withhold from you hallelujah if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will fulfill your desires. I've not finished reading this. Okay, you got it. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. Say own opinions. Say it again. Own opinions are formed by influence. Who is influencing you? Who is telling you to start that business? Who is telling you to go, go to that other country? Who is telling you to go to that particular university? Who is telling you to do this particular course? Is it God or is it people? God will use people, but have you submitted that to God? Have you have, do you have the confirmation that this is the way God is leading me? Or is it because you are, you're being provided a good pay package, you made a decision to go there? Sometime back I told you, even the devil can make you rich. Even the devil can make you rich. But the, listen to me. Both God and the devil are working on one thing. Both want your soul. But the devil wants your soul to destroy you. God wants your soul to prosper you. And to give you heaven for eternity. So that you can live in his presence. 
You can live with him. But if you go and take the, 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 the so-called blessing, so-called wealth that the devil is promising, you will end up in hell and torment forever. What did he do? He said to Jesus, look at all this. The glory of the nations, I can give it to you. Jesus did not challenge that because you knew what the devil was saying was right. Did not, Jesus never said, no, you don't have it. No, he said, yes. He has the power because he took it from Adam. And he was offering Jesus the way to become wealthy, powerful, authoritative, dominate, and take control. Only one thing he had to do, submit, surrender, and bow to the devil. There is a very interesting verse in Revelation. I will show you one day where he talks about the souls of all the kings and the leaders of the nations now in the hands of the devil. But they were given rulership. They were given dominion. They were given wealth. So you can get it from the devil as well. So don't try to establish your own plans in any area of your life. Submit that to God. Let God confirm that in your heart saying, this is the way, walk in completely. And do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you. Rely on who? On who? On who? On the Holy Spirit God to guide you. For he said, I will guide you. He said, I will teach you to not to lose, not to be defeated, but to prophet we know that david fought almost 66 battles he was guided by the spirit of god never lost one battle never lost one battle you know do you do you understand how skillful david was if you do a study we, we talk about how he used the sling right and he killed goliath and we know it was the holy spirit that guided the stone to go and hit the only place that was exposed that was the center of his head but the training that they had in those days was that if they used the sling to release the stone, they would not miss a strand of hair. That's how accurately they, would, they could shoot or release a, a stone from the sling. They were very well trained. They were disciplined people. That, how do I know? Because look at all the people that David raised later. Every one of them was a mighty warrior. Superhuman. Because more than the skill, David taught them to rely on God. He was a go man of God. He was a godly man. And our influence on others should be godly. Godly influence. When we give advice, don't give advice only on how to become rich. But give advice how to become rich godly manner. Depending on God, how can you become rich? Not cutting corners. All right, but depending on God. Hallelujah. All right. With all your heart, rely on Him to guide you, and He will lead you in every decision you make. He will what? Lead you in my decision making. This is important because I'm going to share something. Now, let's go to the next one. No, no, verse 5. Is that? Uh, okay, verse 6. Become intimate with Him. Everybody read that with me, please. Be become what? That's why we are fasting and praying. For intimacy with God. God, the Holy Spirit, is not genie. Now when you have a need, you rub it and it will show up. Whatever that lamp is, you know. Many people want to use the Holy Spirit like that. We are not supposed to use the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to be used by the Holy Spirit. He is not our servant. We are His servants. We're not, we're, he is not here to fulfill my plans. He is here to fulfill his plans through me. Amen. Come on. Amen. His plans through me. What is the purpose for which you were born? What is your destiny? Hey, listen. Always sit back and check. If I'm doing, am I doing for only personal gain? Or is God going to be glorified through this? Is this ministry going to be impacted? Is the kingdom going to grow? I'm not talking to people in ministry alone. Whatever realm and whatever profession God has called you into, what you do, how does that impact the kingdom? 
Will it bring more people into the kingdom? Will it help the kingdom to be enlarged? Will it bring more people to come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? Will it, will it help them to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that they can be impactful wherever God releases them to be? Say amen. So what are we crying for? Intimacy with him. So as we cry out, see, what did this guy come for? He was hungry. He said, man, I, I just can't eat this hog food. I just cannot. Why am I starving like this when there is such super abundant supply in my own father's house? His servants are living a better life than I am. I am a namesake son. How many namesake Christians do we have today? They call themselves Christian, but there is no Christ to, as evidence in their life. There is no evidence of Christ in their lives. That was the problem even with the Jewish nation. They called themselves the sons of Abraham, but the sons of Abraham were so dull that they could not recognize the Messiah. Even today, so many of them are not able to recognize the Messiah. I'm not talking about just Bible knowledge. Because if you talk about Bible knowledge, you, you cannot compare to what some of those scribes and Pharisees. The knowledge they had in the Torah, you have no way of measuring that to stand with them. But thank God for enlightenment. Because although we may not have all knowledge of the Torah and the Bible, we know Jesus. And he, through the Holy Spirit, is bringing revelation to us. So what we need is intimacy so that he can teach us. He can lead us. He can guide us. He can help us make the right choices and make the right decisions. Somebody say amen. amen. Become intimate with him in whatever you do and he will lead you wherever you go. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He will what? Verse 7. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. This is the problem. I know. No, you know nothing. God knows everything. Don't be self-reliant, be God-reliant. Don't for a moment think that you know it all, for wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion. How does wisdom come? Undivided devotion. Avoid everything that is wrong. Glory.